Okay, thank you very much for inviting me, first of all. Um, uh, it is uh, very important, uh, I think, to discuss this type of uh, uh, subjects, uh, viticulture and climate change, in general, agriculture and climate change. Uh, I work uh, in, in, uh, in this sector, been working for uh, several decades, I, I, I should say, um, and uh, I am particularly alarmed by the, the problem of uh, climate change, especially applied to food production. Uh, in the case of viticulture, we are maybe, have, we have seen before, in a slightly better situation because we are uh, producing, uh, not, let's say, not a staple food. I mean, there are people are not surviving on wine. I mean, not all of us, I mean, some maybe survive drinking wine all the time, but uh, it is in a, a very uh, important sector from the economical point of view. So we, there is a lot of money uh, uh, around uh, uh, wine. So it is important uh, to do uh, work uh, uh, on this uh, sector. I have to say that uh, uh, I have been working with a rather large group of, uh, of people uh, and uh, uh, some of them are modelists, uh, some of them are specialists in, uh, in the field. For instance, uh, I, uh, I was pleased to see that Benjamin Bois from the Bourgogne University, who was working with us uh, to develop this system, is also involved uh, in, uh, in, in your scientific uh, committee. So uh, uh, um, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to work with him. He's really a, a great uh, scientist, I think. And uh, um, uh, ARPAE is, uh, a, 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 is not a, a, actually ARPAE is an agency dealing with the environmental monitoring. So what we do is checking that people are not polluting or if they are polluting, we, we sort of police them or something like that. But we are, we, in, within this agency, there is a, a weather service. So uh, the weather service is doing agricultural meteorology and uh, this is why we are dealing with the modeling, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with this type of subject uh, that, we, that we deal uh, today. Um, just to give you uh, some more information, uh, I hope this thing works. Okay, we, we try to uh, apply some research and innovation uh, because we want to address climate change in agriculture and in particular in viticulture. Um, we have problems with agrometeorology at the moment and also in meteorology because we need better monitoring. We need new uh, and, and enhanced uh, weather forecasts. For instance, a very important uh, uh, new development that we have in the world of weather services is so-called climate services. We're dealing uh, with, for instance, um, uh, seasonal predictions. Uh, and seasonal predictions are uh, already being done. They have a completely different uh, nature. They are probabilistic, while the weather um, uh, services usually provide uh, deterministic forecasts. And uh, um, also uh, to face uh, uh, the, the changing environment uh, in, uh, in, in vineyards, we also need to uh, um, address the problem of precision. So this is why uh, precision agriculture can be considered a tool uh, for uh, adaptation to climate change. And uh, uh, I guess uh, you are developing uh, uh, in, in, your, uh, in your project uh, uh, tools that are uh, similar uh, to or, or in nature to the ones that we, uh, we tried uh, to, to, to produce uh, in our project. The project was called Vintage. It was a, a Framework 7 project, so it was supported by the uh, European uh, uh, Union, and uh, uh, the, the leaders of the project were um, four European associations of wine producers. There is also, uh, you will recognize, as some of you are from Portugal, this Andovi. Andovi is the, 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 the association of all uh, producers of, of wine in, uh, in Portugal. There is, of course, uh, Bourgogne and uh, Vignaioli Piemontesi, which is uh, an important uh, group of uh, producers uh, where we, we worked. Also from Spain, there was the Grupo Rioja, which was involved. The, the official name of the project was Vintage, but this name is not used anymore, and for the commercial uh, DSS, we now use the Precision Wine uh, nickname. 
uh, you can find anyway, I want to tell you that you can find using this uh, uh, short uh, uh, URL, tinyurl.com, FP7 Vintage, you will find the final report and some information from Cordis, which is, you know, Cordis is the official database of uh, uh, European research and development projects. So you can find uh, uh, further information of what we did and what we achieved. Um, we were 12 partners from five countries and the funding was in the order of 2 million euros. So it was a rather a big, though not enormous, uh, project. And what is important to say that there were involved, uh, apart from the four uh, associations of, of wine producers, two, co two small companies and seven research and development partners. Um, to, to tell you uh, some more details about that, uh, uh, we have to, uh, to stress that uh, the, the project was led by a, a Roman uh, um, small company called Labor. They were uh, designing and assembling some wireless monitoring station. They implemented the decision support system uh, uh, with the models and they coordinated the whole activities. In uh, ARPAI, we were uh, in, uh, involved mainly in soil uh, and plant modeling. So we were, uh, um, we were given uh, some support to, to, to produce the model suite. I will give more, more details on that. Some people like University of Borgogna was collecting data in the field and uh, also checking and helping in, 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 in fine tuning the models. And INRA was also involved from France, uh, doing some uh, work uh, using satellite images, and also uh, we tried also drone uh, monitoring applications. The University Technical University of Wien, Wien they are a specialist in um, in soil moisture monitoring from space, and uh, uh, so they were uh, involved for this purpose. And finally, a, a small uh, uh, but highly uh, effective uh, company in, uh, in computer science, they were developing the human-machine interface, that is the way you interact with the system. And uh, uh, so uh, all sorts of technology and science was involved uh, in, in the partnership. Now, what was the, the system? Uh, more or less going to do, uh, uh, integrating within uh, one uh, uh, whole and complex system, data coming from uh, monitoring stations placed in the vineyards, using some satellite data, using models for agrometeorology and uh, uh, plant disease, uh, in producing a decision support system using some techniques of artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, designing and testing a human-machine interface and the website. The idea is that, uh, was that uh, all this should be uh, then, at the end of the project, may put in the hand of a, a small company uh, located in Romagna, which is called GAIAG. You will see further uh, information about that. And they are trying to, uh, let's say, sell this type of service and this type of decision support system to uh, interested uh, customers. Uh, again, this is an overview of the of the of the whole system. You see, we expect we expected to develop a, a website. Uh, we expected to develop uh, precision uh, maps for uh, uh, activities uh, done in the field, and also to interact uh, with farmers collecting data in the field. So it was a two-way. Uh, the idea was to develop a system uh, that helped uh, to uh, collect data from the fields and reacting also not only from models, but also from data collected in the field. Um, the, the idea was to produce uh, uh, information and support to fertilization, to pruning, to irrigation, to manage several risks uh, uh, due, for instance, to diseases, and also to forecast uh, and uh, um, provide uh, uh, data on, uh, on, on the coming uh, harvest. For instance, quantity and quality expected of the, uh, of the, um, of the crop and, and, and also uh, forecasting in advance when was the harvest going to, to, to expect it to, to arrive. 
What uh, uh, was expected at the beginning was to have four pilots, uh, as I said, in Italy, in uh, France, uh, in Portugal, and in Spain. For a number of difficulties, uh, only the, the Italian and the French uh, uh, pilot sites were fully developed. One was uh, in Fontana Fredda, which is a rather famous uh, uh, place for, for viticulture in, uh, in Piemonte, uh, uh, producing Nebbiolo, Barbera, uh, Dolcetto, and other uh, important uh, uh, wines. And another um, pilot was developed with the help of Benjamin Bois and colleagues in Saint Romain, which is uh, not far from uh, Dijon, uh, the capital of the Burgundy. Okay? What you see here is that the system includes also the uh, actual geographical distribution of the vineyards. Uh, so for every vineyard, we know where it is. Uh, and also, we have here a description, rather a de detailed description, uh, of the topography. This is very important because the topography is used uh, in, in modeling and interpolation of data. This is a, a, a big uh, asset of this system. And. Um, uh, I don't pretend that you try to read this, but I can describe. This is uh, an idea of how it works, the system. There is some models are run uh, at an hourly uh, rate. That means every hour you have an update of all the, the, the model integrations. For instance, the, the, the data coming from the weather stations, they are interpolated, spatially interpolated every hour. The same thing is done with a special model for radiation. As you know, radiation is essential for uh, having an idea of how much photosynthesis and so on, and also evaporation. Then there is a module on plant growth and, I would say, not only growth, but also development. Uh, and, and, uh, and then another point which we are very proud of is the, the soil physics, because we have a, a module which is uh, computing how water uh, is moving in, in the soil, how temperature, uh, and also uh, we implemented a, a, a movement of solutes. So this is a system of models running uh, operationally every hour, but there are also uh, daily computations. Uh, for instance, the plant disease models we implemented uh, uh, were run every day. And uh, there was also, but it was not completed, a, a module uh, dealing with uh, nitrogen. All this was uh, uh, managed uh, uh, with data uh, coming and going into a large database, which is uh, managing uh, the, the a huge amount of numbers that are generated by this system. Um, uh, one of the companies, I mean the, the, the leading company, Labor, was developing uh, uh, wireless monitoring stations. This may be now uh, is not any more important because there is a fully developed market uh, producing all sorts of uh, uh, agrometeorological stations of all types and all, of all costs, so uh, one maybe could find them in the market. In this case, we wanted to be sure that the stations were, uh, uh, and were, were very robust, and especially they were transmitting data in real time. Um, Again, uh, this is uh, how we were implementing the pilots. As you, as you see, there is a, 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 in this pilot here, there is a, a, a reference station which was already there, uh, managed by the Regione Piemonte, but we placed, uh, according to a number of criteria, some smaller uh, stations to monitor the whole area, which, as you see, is not flat. We are in the hills. And, and uh, uh, also soil uh, uh, changes within this area, and we had also details on, on soil variability, again provided by the region Piemonte. Um, this is what comes out when you run the space, uh, spatial interpolation module. In this case, you see Burgundy, uh, the Burgundy area where we interpolated air temperature, precipitation, relative humidity, so where the, 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 the temperature is higher, relative humidity gets lower. We have leaf wetness, which is an important uh, uh, variable to take into account uh, when you do have to do with the plant diseases. Solar radiation, uh, uh, according, of course, to the, uh, um, to the digital elevation model. And finally, potential evapotranspiration. This was run, as I said, every hour. 
Uh, at that time, uh, now you know, remote sensing is changing very fast. So at that time, the, this was the situation of the data available for soil moisture. Now I would say, and, and also for other parameters, now I would say that if I were an, uh, starting again a project on this, I would rely mainly on Copernicus data, that is on the European uh, satellite constellation of the Sentinel, because this is uh, coming for free, uh, it is uh, uh, reliable, and there is uh, quite a lot of work uh, being carried out on, on this. Um, Another attempt was to deal with the uh, high resolution geometry of the, uh, of the vineyards uh, using, uh, and this was carried out by the INRA partner, uh, to, to uh, um, flying a, a, drone, a drone on, uh, on vineyards in order to produce a, a, a digital model. What you see here is, a not, is not a, a true picture, but it was reconstructed on, on the computer using uh, fine-grained data collected by this uh, uh, funny-looking drone. Uh, this sort of wall you see here is the wall of the models. I mean, all these boxes represent a module which was uh, uh, implemented in time. For instance, this was 2013. This part was still to be implemented, but the rest was essentially all running. Everything is based on, on the availability of, uh, of, of large database. Uh, there were quality checks, uh, there were uh, soil functions, solar radiation, GIS basic functions, and so on. And, and on top of that, there was a test interface with a super user uh, keeping under control the whole, the whole system. So, all this was uh, thought uh, in a professional way. And there were a number of people dealing especially with computer science who helped us, the modelers. So uh, I would say that it was a rather big effort to, in order to develop all this. Um, here you see uh, an animation where uh, my colleagues uh, try to show you how radiation is evolving uh, in the two uh, French and Italian pilots in order to, to see how uh, uh, some areas get much more sunlight than others. So this is very important when you compute photosynthesis, when you also compute the, the data about the quality of, of what you are, uh, of what sort of, uh, of grape you are, you are going to get. And this is done using a module which is developed, was developed at Ar by ARPAI, which is the, the three-dimensional module for, for uh, uh, model computation both for the soil and for, for, for this type of, uh, of, of variable like radiation. Uh, from this type of uh, information, you get uh, maps like this one. For instance, this is the distribution in such a small area like the uh, Fontana Fredda pilot project, you pilot area, you find areas which have even 50% more radiation than others that are, of course, in the shade or oriented towards north. So this gives an, an enormous variability also to the character of the wines that you get from, from here. So you see that going into fine details uh, uh, of data, you get also more details on what you can expect from the wine you produce. Uh, again, here are examples uh, where we run the system without uh, or with uh, the plant, uh, and uh, I I the system gives you an information on how the soil is saturated. And this was the 15th of April, and this was the 30th of June 2012. Uh, degree of saturation goes as, is a number, an absolute number goes in going from zero to one, and zero means uh, uh, no water available for plant, one means, uh, say, field capacity. Oh, sorry, not field capacity, but uh, uh, um, saturated soil, so uh, all pores uh, full of water. Uh, other examples are, are uh, carried out in, in, uh, in uh, other moments. Here, I, sorry, here is the example where you put the plant transpiration into place, and you see the, the differences between the same date uh, with and without the plant, so that you can check that the plant is, is working uh, uh, correctly. Of course, uh, the uh, water is extracted much more uh, on the surface layer than uh, in, in the lower layer. Though, the, uh, as you all know, the, 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 the vine roots uh, go uh, uh, very deep in, in the soil. 
Another uh, uh, thing that we simulate in the system is the phenology. A phenology is, uh, uh, in this case, is represented on a, on a scale which is called the BBCH scale that goes from 0 to 100. Uh, and uh, in this particular scale, the, the stage of Verizon uh, is, uh, uh, and it corresponds to number 76. So these colors represent a, f a small variation of the phenological stage. Here we are uh, at, uh, at 73, and, and there we are uh, further on, because it gets more heat, it is lower, and it is... Uh, um, and leaf area index, uh, instead, is expressed, uh, as you see on the scale... Sorry, I'm trying to use this thing, but I make mistakes. This is, uh, again, a small range from 3 to 3.5, uh, square meters per, per, per square. Still, you see differences uh, in, uh, in the area. And in this case, the cultivar uh, is Moscato. Another uh, um, variable that is simulated is a dry biomass uh, in the fruit. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we are approaching uh, the end of, of, of the season. As you see, there are uh, differences which go in the order of 25% more uh, in, in the areas which are red compared with the areas which are more yellowish. So in general, what we achieved was a system with uh, access from the web and a geographical interface. I was telling Marco before that maybe if you are interested, we could organize, say, a sort of uh, webinar where we can show you uh, how the, 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 uh, the geographical interface works because there are so many functions that can be shown, and uh, I, I, I didn't want to bore you with, uh, with that. And uh, um, what is the, the, in the interface also doing? Is to, it accesses automatically, uh, finding them in the, in, in, in the internet, the weather forecasts. So when you start the inter interface on a certain point, you automatically get the weather forecast for the coming four days or five days. And, and this information is used within uh, the system. So the system is simulating not only what happened up to now, but also for a few days in the future. So all models are uh, used to, to make uh, uh, forecasts. And uh, you get uh, all sorts of specific information on the vineyards. You get also alerts. So the system is emitting also alerts uh, uh, on the phones of, of, the, of the users. And, uh, it gives the support for uh, 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 chemical treatments, farm operation. It gives you, uh, you a, a clear idea of the phenological stage, the maturity projections, quantity and quality of the final product. And of course, the soil moisture conditions and irrigation needs, which is uh, rather strange maybe when we talk about uh, 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 grape production or, 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 or vineyards, uh, but uh, in some instances you need to irrigate, especially in Italy we found ourselves in situation of water stress, such a strong water stress that you had to irrigate even the, the, the vines. Though I don't want to give details, but there is this uh, uh, water balance uh, model which is physically based uh, that was published, uh, I must say, uh, uh, about 10 years ago uh, uh, or a little less. Uh, developed by colleagues uh, uh, Antolini, Tomei, with Professor Bitelli of the University uh, of uh, Bologna. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it provides uh, simulations of water flow uh, at the surface and uh, within the soil, and it's called Criteria uh, 3D. Uh, this system uh, was uh, applied within the, within the um, the precision wine system. Uh, as you see, for instance, here you have a day 23 of August, and after uh, uh, one day of rain, the degree of saturation uh, was simulated, uh, uh, as you see, uh, it changed. But what is funny is that the same uh, rainfall system then moved uh, from France to Italy, to Piemonte. It crossed the Alps, and you can see also its effects uh, the day after on uh, the Fontana Fredda which was rather dry and then uh, showed some signs of being a little bit more wet the day after. Um, 
The plant models, of course, we did not uh, develop uh, uh, all the models. We uh, tried to implement, it was an innovation uh, project, so we tried to put together and make uh, several models working together. For instance, a, a model from a certain Marco Bindi was uh, uh, used in uh, uh, com coming from 1997. We used this model, which was published on Vitis, uh, uh, for the simulation of growth and development in Great Wine. Uh, and, uh, and also we used the model from uh, Cafarra uh, uh, on, on, again, uh, uh, phenology. Uh, Magnani, uh, which is a professor from uh, uh, Florence but working in Bologna, he provided us with a model for photosynthesis. In, in this case, in this publication, it was applied to Pinus silvestri, but the, 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 let's say the, the physiology of photosynthesis is uh, simulated by the same type of model. And then also we, we used models more from uh, 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 about, uh, let's say, quality, uh, uh, which was uh, uh, extracted by publication by these uh, Spanish uh, researchers. Uh, so, um, you see that uh, we did not uh, uh, make uh, research, but we made innovation in, in implementing existing uh, uh, science in, in, a, in a working system. Um, this is about phenology, okay. These are the six main uh, uh, phases simulated by the system. And these are uh, examples uh, of uh, uh, outputs uh, from, uh, I, I would uh, stress, uh, for instance, the uh, uh, possibility to have outputs about the, the, the BRICS degree that is, uh, uh, as you see here, rather different within the same uh, uh, plot, ranging from 19 to 21 in this case. And uh, berry ripening also was, uh, was uh, simulated uh, uh, with a, a, a model. And of course, we had to rely a lot about, uh, on literature from, uh, for instance, Professor Vittorio Rossi, who developed a lot of, uh, of, of modeling on, uh, on mildew. And so we, we implemented uh, also a model for powdery mildew. I don't know the name of the other disease in English, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so, uh, Peronospora e oidio. You have down, uh, down mildew, okay. Again, uh, we want to, uh, as I said, uh, it is not normal to irrigate, uh, uh, or in some cases it is really forbidden to irrigate, but if the conditions of stress become extreme, in some cases you can have here uh, news uh, from, nine, from the year 2012, which was terribly hot, uh, that w a, a, a special uh, um, authorization was given to uh, to irrigate even vineyards because there was an emergency due to the uh, uh, water stress which became uh, really terrible uh, during uh, August in, uh, in Fontana Fredda and also in, I would say in the rest of northern Italy. It was uh, all over, yes. Uh, and uh, well, for instance, we in Emilia Romagna in uh, summer 2012, we lost uh, most of our maize crop because it was not only a problem of water stress, but it was also a problem of temperature stress. Uh, it was a heat stress which was unbearable for many of the crops. So this is why we are worried about climate change because if summers like 2012 become normal, then it is going to be really a bit of a problem to go on with agriculture. Uh, as we know it in summer. And, uh, um, sorry, um, um, okay, I, I said uh, already uh, a, a lot about this. I, I would like to point out that uh, this system is still alive and kicking after several years, and we recently used all the, all, all the models, um, mo mainly the, the, the water uh, simulation model in the soil, because we were involved in a project which is uh, uh, carried out in, uh, in Valtidone. Valtidone is a corner of Emilia Romagna where we have a lot of viticulture. In this case, the activity was not about viticulture itself, but it was about pollution, because uh, um, <laughs> Uh, the, the idea was to try to determine what was the contribution of viticulture practices to uh, contamination of groundwater. I mean, groundwater was found contaminated by a number of chemicals. 
So we tried uh, together with our uh, colleagues, which are chemists and so on, to understand if this contamination had to do with the movement of water within the Valtidone or with specific local activities by farmers. So we, we, one of the things that we did was to use this system, uh, the precision wine, uh, not all the system, but the modeling part, to, uh, uh, to make some simulations uh, uh, apart from... Um, uh, see, here are some data about the, 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 the area of Valtidone. You see there are uh, something like uh, a little less than uh, 200 farmers. And, and uh, uh, so the point is that they do a lot of treatments. And I have to anticipate what we found, that most of the pollution of the groundwater is due not to the treatments themselves, but to the fact that they use water from wells. And then the, some residues from their activities percolates uh, or, or is uh, uh, thrown with, without much attention uh, around <laughs> the, uh, the wells. Some of those wells are used for extracting uh, drinking water. So this can become dangerous and uh, it should be avoided. So this was the, the idea. The project was called Water Protect. So the idea is rather clear also from the title. So this is uh, the province of Piacenza. Uh, this is the Po River. Uh, so we are in northern Italy. In the south there are the Apennines. Uh, Tuscany is somewhere here. Uh, Florence, I mean, I would say. And uh, uh, th this small red uh, uh, circle uh, shows you where is the uh, activity that we carried out. Uh, and uh, uh, you see the, from the pictures that it is typically a wine producing uh, uh, area. So, of course, we, we, tried, we, we used all data from the, the regional soil map and database, so there are some differences between the soils. And we made the simulations. For instance, you see here uh, water inflow. For instance, uh, year 2017, we had a terribly dry summer again. Uh, and there was practically no movement of, of water. And while uh, 2018, there was quite a lot of movement, you can even see that the simulation is producing the pictures of the small streams and, and the little river that is running here. So this is, this is not a, a picture from, from space, but it is the output of the simulation showing where water is going uh, in, a, in, a, in a wet year, while no water is moving, practically no water is moving in a dry summer. So what we concluded uh, was that uh, uh, um, the, the system was showing that in, in we, we found the pollution even when the water was not moving, so the pollution had to be originating uh, locally. And uh, um, there will be other developments in, 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 uh, in, in next years, uh, and uh, well, there will be other simulations carried out with this. So. Uh, my general message, I would like to, to stop now, uh, is that we, we carried out a lot of work in this field, but there is uh, still a strong interest in cooperating. So if you are interested in going on with some interaction between your project and our activities, we are very happy to do it. As I said, for instance, we could organize a webinar where we show how the interface is working. And uh, uh, also, uh, I would like to stress that uh, uh, though I am speaking from, uh, let's say, a, 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 a public agency, uh, the system is uh, managed by a private company called GAIAG. And uh, this is the reference uh, person, Stefano Campagnolo, from the company uh, in Emilia Romagna in Cesena. Okay, that was more or less all I wanted to, to tell you. Thank you.